Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nikia and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my journey, aka a short story on how I became a data analyst. So this is a common question that I get like, how did you become a data analyst? And I feel like I've addressed this in a prior video, but I believe it may have been a part of like a Q&A or stuck in some other kind of videos. So figured I would do a separate dedicated video talking about how I became a data analyst. So so just to briefly go over it because I again I believe this is a short story and I'm just gonna go back a little bit in time so at my company I did not start out in this role but at one of one of the more recent roles leading up to me becoming a data analyst so I worked in operations our local operations we had like a local operations team and then we had our um, headquarters operations team so I worked in local operations we supported the people that were closest like the were in our state pretty much so like I worked in local operations and I was on a team that did speech analytics so on that speech analytics team we listened to calls to listen to the interaction between our customers and our employees gather insights from that and pretty much we were manually like recording like filling out a spreadsheet of what was happening on the interaction and we were listening to calls for different things and with the speech analytics like it was like a tool that we could use to kind of see what was being said but it wasn't 100% accurate but that's the role that I was doing. Then our company did a restructuring realignment slash layoff type thing and I was placed on a reporting team. Now prior to this restructuring this reporting team was was a data analytics team. However with the restructuring that moved to HQ and this team was just a hodgepodge of people from different teams being placed on this and stamping the label on as reporting. Now we did not do any coding. We did not create any dashboards. So I just want to clarify that. Like, yes, it was labeled as reporting, but we weren't reporting in analytics and data science were a separate team that was moved solely to our headquarters team. So we would just use the reports that the, our headquarters team provided to us to provide like information out to the people that we supported to RVP, that type of thing. So within that team, I pretty my focus was pretty much on all things around employee performance. So that when it came to creating metrics that would be on our employees performance agreements, I was a part of that design process. I was a part of testing out those metrics. I was a part of discussing those metrics and how they would impact the employee, how we needed to notify employees of these changes. I was I was a part of managing the tools that our employees would use to look at their performance because we have a tool specifically that allows them to track and see how their performance is because like you have to look at where you are year to date to whether or not you're meeting these targets or goals that are on your performance agreement. So you can have a target for a specific metric that you need to hit 80% and you need to be able to track that performance throughout the year. So I was responsible for making sure that the tool was working and ensuring that employee results were accurate. If employee performance needed to be excluded for any particular reason something went wrong I was responsible for putting in exclusions for employee performance I was responsible for ensuring that employees had this correct performance agreement because your goals and targets are different depending on what role you're in so I would have to audit and check to make sure that our employees have the right agreement tied to their title so you can't be a manager and be on let's say in a director performance agreement your target and goals are different so that's a mismatch in the system so that's something I was responsible for correcting if we needed reporting or a dashboard for anything related to those employee performance or metrics I was responsible for working back with our HQ data analytics team data science team to have them build dashboards for us where I can go in and see employee performance pull the data down report out on what was going on with employee performance that type of thing so I would say the skills that I had like my domain knowledge was around employee performance I would use my prior role where I was doing speech analytics applied in this role because if an employee said hey 
I did such and such and I needed to see what that in interaction was between that employee and the, po and the customer. I can go and review the call, listen to it in speech analytics, that kind of thing, you know? So that was what I did. Like my prior role kind of rolled into this. I still needed those skills, still use those things. And then I was responsible for a lot of other things. I was responsible for ensuring correct scheduling, the schedules that were gonna be available to an extent. I would say it was just a mixed bag of different things that I was responsible for when it came to um, employees that were on corrective action. I would have to work back with HR because there were certain things that they had to be excluded from. So I worked a lot with our HR team on things as well. So all of this just general knowledge skills that I gained working in reporting, but pretty much doing employee performance management. So managing all of the, making sure all of the tools and systems they needed work, making sure like any metric changes, how that's going to impact them, how that's going to look on their performance agreement. I needed to understand how these metrics calculated year to date, especially when we had a change in metrics. So we could be holding you accountable to this metric through July, starting August, you're going to get a brand new metric on your employee performance. I needed to be able to explain how that's going to work to employees because they don't understand how the math works and a lot of the times the leaders don't understand how the math works either so again a part of my role so it was just a mixed bag of different things that I was, was responsible for and I was doing that for a couple of years and then our company went through another restructuring and with this one a lot of people that were on like I liked what I did and I liked the team that I was a part of and a lot of the people were leaving the team so I started looking for jobs <laughs> to leave the team because I didn't want to be left there by myself with a whole bunch of new people pretty much like I really liked the team that I was a part of and I applied for this job it, it was on a team that I had worked with the, the in our HQ team so the senior manager of this team like the data analytics team at our HQ level I had worked with a person on his team that would create dashboards for me for what I needed when I worked in the employee performance space. So if I needed a dashboard and I didn't have this data, like access to this information anywhere, I would put in a request with them and they would build the dashboard, go over the requirements, we would have calls. So I was pretty much on like the client stakeholder side of things at that point. That is the team that I ended up applying for a job with like his team and I like I knew uh, like I didn't know the senior manager but I knew of him because sometimes the guy that was on his team he would join the calls with him to go over requirements with me what I needed they would show me the dashboard tell me like ask me questions like what do I need is this going to fulfill the request that kind of thing they do like on the spot modifications blah 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 so I applied for the job that job that was open on his team so he had an opening he had a couple openings actually so I applied for one of the jobs that he had on his team and I will say this there was nothing on that job posting that said anything about having experience in employee performance it had everything to do with data science slash data analytics yeah so like as far as like skills with SQL or skills with like it listed you needed to have such and such years experience with SQL. Actually I think I may have the job posting. One moment. Okay y'all it took some digging but I <laughs> I was I know I had the application so qualifications I'm going to read you guys what it said in the application so a BA or BS degree in information systems computer science business admin finance or related field three plus years experience working with data and data analysis three plus years of experience working with key metrics and business drivers three plus years of advanced SQL and Teradata Tableau and Microsoft SQL Server required advanced knowledge of Microsoft Excel specifically with charting data management and pivot tables strong logic quantitative and analytical skills deductive reasoning and problem solving skill so there are some strong knowledge of the 
technologies that we use specifically within our company, like the tools that our employees use. So I'm not going to say that, but those are some of the tools that it listed. But in addition to EDW, didn't know that. Um, results oriented, strong sense of urgency, proactive and flexible. Candidate must have a solid understanding of a statistical methodology. And it has advanced data mining and SQL skills to evaluate, analyze, and critically inspect performance trends and results. So yeah, outside of like knowing like the employee tools and maybe, uh, yeah, that's it. As you can see, <laughs> I feel like I was very underqualified for this position, but I feel like I was very oblivious, did not care at the moment. I just applied for it. And he, again, he was the manager of the guy that I worked with that would build reports and dashboards for us, for, like for our team and for me specifically that I needed. So I knew of him, he knew of me because again, he would attend a couple of those calls. But when I got on the interview call, you guys, I I had prepared to show him like kind of like a couple of things that I did in my existing role because like I didn't have any like I couldn't do anything in SQL I couldn't do anything in the databases I didn't have access to those tools so I could not showcase something I knew nothing how to do so I was going to show him some of the things that I projects and things that I worked on in my role with employees and that kind of thing right when I got on the interview call this man asked me hey so you know those dashboards that my team built for you what did you do with those reports? What did you do with those dashboards? So on the spot, I had to pull up <laughs> all of the things that I did. And for me, that was good because these are things that I'm very familiar with and are I'm, I was able to speak to it confidently. Like really, like for me, I feel more comfortable talking about a topic or a subject that I'm knowledgeable about. If it's a project I worked on and I poured my heart and soul into it, I can talk to you about it all day. So he wanted to know what exactly was it that I did with this, these dashboards that I was asking them to build. So I showcased that as a part of my interview when it came to that portion. Um, I didn't have like a technical interview as far as like doing any type of coding or doing any kind like answering questions on like if I was given this, how would I find the information in the database or anything like that? Because again, I didn't, even if I was asked to do that, I would not have been able to do that. Luckily for me, I wasn't, I was just asked to show what I did with the dashboards that his team built for me. So that's what I did. And I was able to speak to that. So I used the data in the dashboard. These are the insights that I gathered. Here's the deck that I put together. Here's what I presented. Here was my recommendation, that kind of thing. And that's why I. I kind of speak to having domain knowledge like if you come from a fi finance background a marketing background use that to your advantage when you're applying for different positions because you may not have all the data analytics skills but you have domain knowledge which you also will probably need when you go into these positions so that is how I got into becoming a data analyst and once I got hired my manager said this may not be the case for everyone but I feel like you guys make me feel like I was lucky and like I, this was rare that my manager hired me knowing it, I didn't have any of those skills, but he was willing to train me to get those skills and couple it with my domain knowledge on the employee performance side of things. So I, I guess I was just super lucky that he's like, I can teach you all those things that you need. We on the team can teach you all the things that you need to do this work, but we just need someone with your experience with employee performance. Other people on my team have skills, but in different areas, I need someone specifically that knows the employee performance space. So that's how I got hired here. And in all of my roles, kind of like within data and analytics, it's been around employee performance. Like more recently, last year, I moved to sales. No background in sales, but I know employee performance. So use that to your advantage when you're applying for roles, your domain knowledge and, and work, the relevant work experience, I would say. So again, that job listing, nothing about employee performance, but... <laughs> That is going to, I think that's going to be it for this video, y'all. I hope that kind of like gave you insight into like my little short story on how I became a data analyst. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will see you in my next video.